So I got 4,000 last files and I want to make DEMs and hill shades. So that was kind of a fun one. Um, again, using kind of dynamic workflows because I'm going to have 4,000 of these things. So where's Las Vegas? Here we go. Mass Las. And um, now, once again, when, when I generate this thing, you, um, what you do is you say, uh, I just want all, I, when I went readers, I said add reader, and I said I'm going to do last files, and I went and picked from the directory wherever these things live. Okay, so here we go, uh, input. I would have picked one of them, and then I'd have just gone and said, look, I don't care. I want all of them mm -hmm. and do it as a single merged feature type. So that's so now however many are going to be in that directory, that's what we're going to read. And so that's how we set this up and I'm going to just run this while we're um while we're talking. But so each one comes through and then this is a trick Dimitri again rec recommended is the last data often has way more in it than you want. Because we're going to make rasters, ahead of making these rasters, let's effectively resample the, the last to be have much less data by, uh -huh. by numerically rasterizing it. So I said, okay, look, I'm only going to want 10 by 10 spacing ultimately. So I'm going to just thin this thing down to 10 by 10, and then I'll use that to do the hill shading and the DEM. Hmm. And you can play with this. Maybe I should have done 7 by 7 here, so I have a little bit more than I need for my final one, but it's a way of getting rid of a lot of data, so I make a much smaller um, result at the end. And so um, so then I ended up uh, producing what I wanted. Oh, and on the writing side, I added a GeoTIFF writer, and I said, fan out by the original base name. The last file would have had some kind of a name. When I come out of this, I want to write out each raster using that same name. So the hill shades go to one folder, and the other guys go to another. So if I go here, I can see here all the hill shades, and they're all named by the original folder that they came from. And uh, in the other one are the, these are not the Democrats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> these are the DEMs. And so um, I can't, these are uh, floating point, and so the built-in Mac viewer doesn't get that sort of thing. Uh. So if I, whoops, I shouldn't have done it in that. Let me just say this. I'll open the data set and, um, yeah, that's, that looks good. So here it is, and that is the actual elevation model um, that was produced for that particular spot. And if I, um, yeah, I think that's that's great. If I look at the whole thing, did, I think it might have output it for me. No. Yeah. Anyway, so that's uh, that's what I got. So again, what are the tricks? Thinning it ahead of time with numeric rasterizer, dynamic on the input, dynamic settings on the output. These mosaicers were just if I wanted to see the whole thing uh, together for some reason at the very, very yeah. end. Yeah. And so um, that's... So, so Dave, yeah, yeah. I yes. would have thought, I was wondering, would it be better to use a uh, workspace runner in that case and, and run each one of those as a separate process? Sometimes that is a, a good trick. And what you could do, um, actually in that case, I would set up a path reader and then have a, a slave workspace that takes the path of an input and does this stuff only one at a time. And you could do that if you, uh, first of all, you can get some parallelism by doing that. If I was in an FME server situation, I'd do an FME server job submitter for the middle part. And that way I could have like however many engines, 16 of these going at once to get done in a bigger hurry. So, so it's a very good point, Mark, to kind of turn this into a master slave situation. If I only am on a desktop and I'm kind of doing stuff one at a time anyway, in this case, I don't really lose by doing it in one because each of these transformers works one raster at a time. I'm not really piling data up. Um, it kind of all flows through anyway. But okay. your point is a, a good insight. If I was going to get this done in a bigger hurry, I'd be wise to, um, to, to do this with a server job submitter or yeah. a workspace runner and turn on some parallelism.